Hey everyone, a question we get asked a lot as travel advisors is why would I go on a cruise? People have a lot of preconceived notions on whether cruises are gross or they're not that much fun or it's just a bunch of people packed together. So today we are gonna give you a bunch of reasons why you should consider going on a cruise and then we're gonna give you some tips and tricks if you are. Let's go. Hey everyone, Johnny from Bite Size Cruises. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, we're a small travel agency. We specialize in cruise travel, and our goal is just to give you the best possible information about cruising so that you can plan and go on an amazing cruise vacation. Today, we are gonna give you some reasons on why maybe you should go on a cruise. A lot of people will give you reasons why you shouldn't. We're gonna give you the other side of it. So number one, you have these amazing sea days to just relax, rejuvenate, and enjoy all of the things that there are to do on a cruise ship. I think a lot of people don't realize sometimes when you leave a port or you go to the next port, sometimes you have a sea day in between, which basically just means that you are sailing for the day. So you can lay out by the pool, you can go get spa treatments, they have trivia, there are restaurants all around the ship. Some of them are included, so you don't even have to pay for the food. Some of them are a little bit extra, but the food is great. You could do breakfast, lunch, and or dinner. And there's just a ton of things. Some cruise ships have racetracks. Some of them have water slides. Some of them have arcades and all these different Broadway shows and everything. So you don't have to do all those things. You could just sit by the pool. Some of them have indoor pools. Uh, and you can relax. You can go for a little swim in the pool. You could sit in a hot tub and you could just have a nice, peaceful, quiet day. Next up, you get to sleep in a big comfortable bed while you're whisked away to another city or a beautiful island. You don't have to get on a plane and go somewhere else. You don't have to drive in a car. You don't have to squish yourself into a bus with a bunch of other people. You have your own bedroom. You could just hang out. You have your own bathroom. You can relax. You can get a great night's sleep and wake up in another part of the world. Next one is there is more of an all-inclusive nature than there are in a lot of other vacations. So you get your meals, your accommodations, and all of your entertainment included. There are additional things that you could add to your cruise if you would like to, like fancier specialty dining or like a chef's table. Or sometimes there are uh, some entertainment that might be a little bit extra, but for the most part, your room and board and your food and the entertainment is all included. So you can go and see as many shows as you would like and have a great time, especially live entertainment. Next up, it is an amazing option for introverts and extroverts. So land vacations can be very isolating. You don't really know a lot of people. You're kind of just wandering around a resort or you know, if you're at Disney or wherever you're at, if you're on a cruise, you can choose that insulated experience where you kind of spend some time in your room, you just relax by yourself, you don't have to talk to a bunch of different people. But the one thing you'll notice on a cruise is everybody is so friendly and welcoming. You're gonna wind up meeting other families. If you're with a couple, you'll meet other couples. If you're solo, you'll meet other solo cruisers and people who love to cruise that will give you tips and tricks and you'll have fun and you might have dinner or lunch with those people sitting at your table. It's a really great place to meet other people or just relax by yourself. Number five reason is that you could see everything on one trip. You have a variety of destinations. If you said to yourself, hey, for the next week or so, I would like to see as much of Europe as I can. It's harder and way more expensive to do if you are just driving or taking a bus or flying to different places. With a cruise, you could go to Italy, France, Spain, Malta, uh, Turkey, all these different places on one cruise. Now, the downside of that is you might not get a day or two full in each of those locations, but you do get a little taste of it. You can get off, you could do some really fun things, and then you get back on the ship, you jump into your comfy bed, and you wake up in a new place the next day. And then last but not least, they're just super easy to plan. If you have a really good travel advisor that knows a lot about cruising, they can really match you up with the right cruise line for you, the right accommodations, the right entertainment, the right level of excitement, and you will have an amazing cruise vacation. Now, if you do plan to go on a cruise, let's talk about some tips or tricks. Number one is use a travel agent to help you pick the right cruise line 
destination and the right time of the year, not only to sail, but to book your cruise vacation. There are like good times to book. There are great times to sail, whether you like sailing with kids or not, you're gonna get that great information. Number two, be prepared. Bring some over-the-counter uh, or prescription seasick medication if you're afraid of being seasick. Generally, you're not gonna have to worry about it. If you're not worried about it at all, that's great, but it's good to have just to give you that peace of mind. I generally don't recommend the patch. It does make you a little dry and you're not really supposed to drink on it, but if that works for you, that is great as well. Next up, don't get FOMO on day one. A lot of people just get on the cruise ship and then they're running around trying to do everything, go to this show, go do sign up for all these excursions, try all these different food options, and then sometimes if you're single or you're with a group of single people, you'll meet somebody on day one. Here's the thing, you're gonna see that person for the next seven days, so pace yourself. If you are there and uh, you're, look, if you're looking for a love connection and you meet them on day one, that's great. If you're just looking to have a nice, fun, relaxing time, don't stress yourself on day one. Get the lay of the land, figure out where everything is, and then ease into it as the week goes on. You're there for a good amount of time, unless you're on like a two-day cruise. But if you're on a week-long cruise, you have plenty of time to do all the things you want to do. Spend that day one really learning where everything is on the ship and checking out everything and see what you really want to do. Same with the people. Um, number four, don't overpack. So check the dress codes. Talk to your travel agent. Talk to people on the internet. There's Facebook groups for each of the cruises. You're going to learn that most cruise lines... You don't have to be really dressed up. Now, you certainly can be if you'd like to. There are formal nights on some of the cruise lines. But most of the time, you could be resort kind of casual. So don't overpack. You don't need a bunch of different things. Most days, you're going to be hanging out in a bathing suit and a t-shirt. Next up, take advantage of everything that's included in your cruise fare. Watch videos, ask travel agents, do research online, and figure out all of the different things that are included. Even if you're a veteran cruiser, if you're in one of the loyalty programs, sometimes you get little bonus things like a drink or a specialty dining uh, add-on, or you get internet or different things. So make sure you know all of the things that are included in your cruise fare so you can have an amazing cruise. Up next, number six, get out and enjoy people. We talked about it before. If you are extroverted, you could meet some lifelong friends on a cruise. The people you meet on the cruise are very friendly. They're outgoing. They're excited to be cruising. Uh, and it's a great environment to meet new friends. Number seven, if you do plan on watching things on your iPad or in your room, I recommend downloading those things before you get on a ship. The internet gets better every day on cruises but it's still not like you're at home. So don't rely on streaming or downloading once you're on the ship. If you wanna download, or if you're gonna watch some Netflix or some Hulu, download those things ahead of time so that you have them and you are ready to go. Next up, tip number eight, pick excursions that work best for you. The cruise line excursions, while all of them will guarantee to get you back to the ship on time, they might not be really immersive or small groups you might be in with a group of 40 or 50 people. There are other companies out there like Viator uh, that do more kind of smaller, more personal, more immersive excursions. So do all the research on excursions. You will get back to the ship on time. Don't worry, that is your responsibility. Make sure you are checking. If I have to be back on the ship by five, I'm usually back by three. So I usually book around those things to know that I am good to go. Number nine, don't you don't have to max out your drink package every day. I know if you buy the drink package, you're gonna think, oh, I have to drink seven drinks or eight drinks a day to make sure I break even. Don't stress yourself about it every day. There's a natural ebb and flow. You know, if you wanna drink, have a drink. Don't pressure yourself into getting more drinks. If you feel like you have to, it might ruin your day more than it's gonna help you. And then last but not least, don't get caught up in the nickel and diming if you don't have to. And remember, you have to pay gratuities. So your gratuities are daily. You can prepay them, which I highly recommend. Um, and then while you're on the ship, people will try to sell you stuff, just like if you go anywhere in the world. They're going to try to upsell you into spa packages or bingo cards or specialty dining. While all those things can be amazing, do what works best for you. Don't feel pressured by those 
uh, additional costs, even buying things like pictures and different things like that. You don't need to do any of those things to have a good time. Once you pay for your cruise, you're going to have a great time anyway. So that is it. We hope you enjoyed the video. We would love for you to subscribe and come along with us. We put out a brand new video about cruising every day. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see everybody tomorrow. Bye everyone.